Hey everybody, it's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman and uh, my buddy Pastor Matt Richard is back. How you doing? It's good to see you, Harrison. It's good to see you too. Um, I can't wait to talk about today's because uh, it's something that I am super, super prone to. Uh, every time we, we come around to, to do this, uh, I sort of say, you know, what is Jesus talking about today? And uh, you, you sort of dive into what, what your study group is is uh, looking at as you you meditate on God's word because this is how we, we find out. Um, you had grumbling today. What does Jesus say about grumbling? Well, um, obviously, the, the the text for this Sunday is that uh, parable where all the different workers, they work different hours of the day. Now, I don't know about you, but if I put a long day of work and I'm expecting to get what paid, right? Get paid out. And right. Somebody else comes and they're slack and they show up late and then we expect them to what? Be punished, right? But yet in that parable, the ones that show up late get paid the same as those that get paid for the full day. And the grumbling occurs because the the uh, person paying in the parable is gracious. And so we're grumbling at graciousness. And this brings us back to the book of Exodus as well. And if you think about the book of Exodus, the Israelites, they're in slavery in Egypt, and uh, they're grumbling and complaining and crying out because it's not good working conditions and they're in slavery. It's It just it stinks. And then so here comes Moses, right? Moses comes along and through all the uh, plagues and so forth, uh, you know, comes against hard-hearted Pharaoh, and they get delivered out of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, out of their bondage. And then there, there they are in the wilderness, right? Uh, they're, I mean, they're actually uh, not quite the wilderness, but they're out, out and about and free. And what do they do? They start complaining. We want water, and and it's like you brought us out here to kill us, Moses. Mm. And and I, I guess when I read slavery, right? And so when I read Exodus, and I'm just looking at this, I'm like, my goodness, you guys. We're in bondage and slavery. You get delivered and you complain. And that text where they're grumbling and complaining, they, they actually, uh, Moses is fearful they're going to what kill him. And so really, what do they deserve? Uh, then this this whole idea where the text actually talks about, you know, taking this rod, the staff of Moses. And you you think immediately when you think that, you think back, well, that staff was used to dip it in the Nile to turn it into blood and mm-hmm. so forth. You know, what do those people deserve? They deserve that staff of Moses to what? To strike them dead for their ungratitude and for all the gifts. And yet Moses goes over and strikes the rock and gives them what they don't deserve, water. And then the New Testament picks that up, that that is that, that rock is Christ. And so, right. man, in our grumbling, in our struggles, in our dissatisfaction, when even the Lord gives us good gifts, we grumble. And yet what? Instead of striking us with his rod, he strikes the Christ to pour yeah. more gifts upon us. It, it's super important to, to sort of recognize all of this. Um, just sort of, I think, because it's, it's a sin that I'm super, super prone to. Um, I, I, I love to complain. I, I love to, to grumble. I love to whine about things. Uh, and it, it sort of comes with a chance to, to look down on, on the situation, but it ends up looking down on God. Somebody interrupted me in the middle of it once. Uh, I was a church member, uh, God be praised, and uh, preached uh, to me and said, you know, hey, pastor, uh, you know what they say about uh, about complaining? And I say, no. He said, it's, it's, it's like vomiting. It makes you feel better, but everybody you do it in front of ends up feeling worse. Hmm. Um, and I was like, oh. Okay, that's it's probably pretty valid. Um, but but when we when we grumble, um, it it's always against something, uh, and that word against really really matters. The people in Exodus they grumbled against the Lord and against Moses uh, because it's not just that there is something wrong. Even when we complain, it's not just that there is something wrong. There there deep down is a blame behind that, and um, it, it has to find a target. Uh, we will we will grumble against our leaders or against our bosses or against our pastors, but if you just even want want to grumble pretty soon, it will be against the Lord. What you're saying is the way that the Lord has has created and sustained this this thing is not right. I could do it better. And here are all the places where he has failed me. And and then we always pick the things that are not good to, to hold it up. The people of, Is- of, of Israel were like, you know what would be so much better than being kind of thirsty? Lifetime slavery. Let's just, <laughs> right? let's, just let's just do that. Um, right. Is this a healthy way to look at the world? Well, you know, and in, in, in one of the commentaries we were reading this morning with my other pastor buddies who are getting together is that this grumbling, one of the commentators said that this grumbling is impatient unbelief. I was like, wow, you know, it's unbelief that's impatient, right? We want the proof in the proof in the pudding right now. 
you know, we want the payout right now. It's avoiding the suffering. It's avoiding the uncertainty. It's uh, it's questioning the goodness and the character of God himself. And so, no, now let's just rewind it. I, I mean, I can get, to a certain extent, I can get, you know, I can have sympathy among the Israelites when they're grumbling against their oppressors, right? I mean, there's, there's a sense where, you know, if you have an unjust judge, right, or an unjust job or a you know, a boss of some sort, or some ruthless, tyrannical leader, there makes sense that there can be some grumbling there. So you can have some sympathy on that, I guess, to a certain extent, we can have some sympathy. But then when you're given good gifts, and those good gifts are not good enough, I mean, when we when we fail to realize all the good gifts that we've been, and I don't know about you, but there will be many times where I'll, I'll get something brand new, right, a brand new, whatever it is, whether it's a vehicle or, you know, a trinket or something that's new, and I get it, and then it doesn't work the way that I think it's supposed to work. And then I'm angry and I'm grumbling because this new gift that I was given that I probably don't even deserve or need, I'm upset about that. And then I go and I grumble. Hey. Then you have to go buy an accessory for it and then buy another accessory. And then you're not, and then, and then you're, and it's like, man, I'm complaining about a gift that I've been given. And I'm like, and I just, I just, I've, I'm like, man, there's no bottom to the sinfulness in all of us, you know, this grumbling, mm-hmm. uh, the gifts that we've had. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm reminded of a comedian once. He was talking about the first time that he was uh, in an air, airline uh, airport and they were up, you know, he said, think about this. We're, we're, we're in an airplane traveling at what, 500 miles per hour, a couple miles above the land, suspended in a seat, you know, in an aluminum capsule. And they offered Internet for the first time. So he said, here we, here we are, we're going 500 miles per hour, two miles above land, uh, flying through in this capsule with, you know, that's impossible, right? To, that you, you, if, if, if you were on the outside, you would die. And then the internet comes forth and everyone's, we're going to offer free complimentary inter- internet for everyone. And everyone gets on it and then it crashes. And he goes, the guy next to him took his laptop and he slammed it, sh- slammed it shut and said, well, pff, that stinks, right? He's like, you know, and, 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 and the comedian's like, do you not realize, you know, the internet is not working, but yet here you are sitting in a seat a couple miles above land, trying to land 500 miles per hour. And you have, you know, a, a soda in front of you and and some food, and you're in a comfy little seat. The ingratitude, right? And then the context. And so, I don't know. I, I look at this and I look at the goodness of God. And every time I see how how gracious our God is, like in this context of the Egyptian or not the Egyptians, but the uh, uh, Book of Exodus, that what they probably deserved was the staff of Moses striking them down, and yet He strikes the rock and gives them water. And then when we look at all that we deserve for our sins of thought, word, and deed. And the Lord, instead of what? Striking us, he strikes the Savior. You know, mm. he strikes the Savior, and that Savior pours out blood for you and for me that we don't deserve. And so it I leaves me in awe with this grace, this grace that it. we don't deserve it. And and I don't know why he did it. I don't know why he did that for us. Um, I, I don't think I can ever compliment, comprehend how and why he did that for us, but he did. Uh, and that grace is good, and it makes me ashamed for my grumbling. You know, but but see, this is this is actually it, though. I think so many times when we talk about the grumbling or the complaining, it's it's usually sort of like you should be more optimistic. You should count your blessings. You should look on the bright side of life. Um, and it's it's not just that. Uh, it it's you're right. It, it it's easier to make it through life as an optimist than a pessimist. Although I've, I'm well rehearsed at the latter. I think it's sort of really just this. Are, are you expecting mercy from God or not? Because if everything is always grumbling, if everything is always wrong, the idea that God would be merciful it is is all the more just sort of out of sight uh it, it's out of comprehension and, and it, it almost gets to be an appalling thing later um so you have uh the, the text that you mentioned everybody gets paid the same amount of of work or of wage despite how much work they did and people grumbled about this they they grumbled about what what the, translates to eternal life if you believed at the first or the last hour eternal life is yours in christ god be praised and, and people at the end of it are, are, are trying to to count instead of say, God gives good gifts. If if grumbling is sort of the, the forefront thing then uh, on your mind, the one thing in the world you're never going to be looking for is, is a God who gives uh, out of out of pure mercy and love to people who don't deserve it. Because uh, because grumbling is going to be rooted in fault somewhere. And, and And God doesn't actually count the fault. He takes it himself. He carries it to the cross. He bleeds. He dies. And he gives good gifts to the people who don't deserve it, even the ones who grumble. Yeah. Well, and that, that that parable too. I mean, the very fact that they got a wage to begin with. 
right? I mean, just my goodness, the very fact that um, they even had, you know, the ability and the freedom to work, you know, in, in that vineyard, uh, that's a gift of it itself. And so I, I think, you know, I think it really comes down to, you know, when we understand how much we're not deserving these good gifts, you know, which starts by some introspection and looking at ourselves, looking at our heart and looking at um, everything we take for granted, all the daily, you know, we talk about daily bread, right? Just, just the, and I talk this with my confirmation students as we go through the Lord's prayer, the daily bread, the very fact that we're breathing air, that's, that's kind of nice. Um, the very mm-hmm. fact that we could come to the church and not be shot at, you know, the very fact that we have shoes on our feet, we have a coat, that we have clean drinking water, that we have food, all of these things are gifts. My goodness, there's no end to it. And yet I know in my own apathy, my own self-centered sinfulness, I grumble, which is God have mercy on me, a sinner. And then what he does, he sends Christ. Christ dies for me, the sinner, dies for you, dies for us, and gives us what we don't deserve, which is grace. And that's why grace is so awesome. It's We don't deserve it. He has every reason not to die for us, and he does. That's that's his goodness to us. Absolutely. To close, we're going to do something maybe we, we haven't done here before. Maybe we should have done more of. Would you say a prayer for us who grumble? Yeah. Heavenly Father, we repent. We repent of our grumbling. We repent. Oh, man, we repent. We ask that you would cleanse us, that you would forgive us of our sins, that you would replace this spirit of grumbling with joy, with gratitude, with an understanding of the gifts. Turn us from our inside out to you to see the goodness that you are to us, the goodness that you have done for us and how you will sustain us into the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.